What's up, Gear Immortals? Alex Nasla here, and on today's edition of Gear God's Quality Control, we are going to take a first look at the Roland Phantom 6. So this isn't going to be like a comprehensive review. That'll come later. Uh, this is just going to be a first look, kind of first impressions thing, uh, kind of talk about what's new, all the features uh, it has in it, and discover some sounds with you guys, and uh, just give you my overall quick impressions about it. So right off the bat, when you first turn on the keyboard, uh, it loads right into what they call uh, their scene select. And this basically, if you're familiar with rolling keyboards in the past, they used to have like a performance mode and then a, like a patch mode. And they basically don't have that anymore. It's just all a scene mode, uh, which is basically like the performance mode. So each scene can hold 16 sounds and uh, each sound has multiple layers of tones and patches and uh, multiple layers of effects. Uh, so that's basically all just one scene now, but if you do want like individual sounds, uh, you still can do that. Uh, you just like click on whatever you, just click on single tone here and uh, it'll show you uh, the first tone on, on the zone, the first uh, layer. And if you press enter, boom, it takes you to the individual sounds. So right now we're on a, we're on the pianos. You know, what, let's check out some of the pianos. Actually, so here you can see uh, it's uh, it says Z core and V core on the sides of some of these sounds. So, so sorry, V piano and Z core. So V piano, this is uh, from what I understand, it is the literal V piano sound engine that you can get like from Roland's. Uh, highest end stage uh, pianos like the RD2000 and stuff like that. Uh, so it is like top level uh, piano library uh, or s reproduction uh, of a piano. If I remember correctly, the V piano doesn't quite use samples, or it uses like some kind of hybrid of samples and physical modeling. It's really cool, it's very realistic sounding. Uh, let me pull up actually, let me pull up. A piano let's see here stage grand and see here like and they have like they give you a lot of different options like you can control how open or close the lid you want string resonance damper resonance all that kind of things we're gonna let's see here yeah you can tell the difference between the lid being open and closed And here you have uh, your categories of all the different sounds and your user and assign category. Uh, I mean, let's just go through some of these sounds. Let's go to the E piano and see what we got here. Um, all right, let's try this first one. Let's try organ. First thing is John Lord, why not? Nice. So another thing I have to mention actually now that I uh, do some shredding is the, uh, the key bed is a huge upgrade compared to Roland's past key beds. In fact, like as far as I'm aware, Roland haven't updated or upgraded the key their synth action keys in their keyboards since the Phantom X, which is like 2006, I think. So as far as I'm aware, this is the first time they've actually changed those the keys that they're using for synth action, and these are so much better. In fact, these might be my new favorite, like my new number one. Uh, because usually having a, a keyboard that isn't that great isn't the end of the world. I mean, it'll, you know, slightly hinder your performance, uh, worst case scenario. Uh, and if you have a good key, uh, keyboard, it's just comfortable to play 
and uh, you know you won't really have any issues. But this keypad, I I could swear that it makes me play a little better. And why, what I mean by a little bit better, I mean the way the keys press down and bounce back up is I f it just I feel like it's tuned in such a way that it's like it comes back up perfectly, and I can play like faster shreddy stuff like that much tighter and more accurate is the best way to describe it. Alright, cool. Uh, let's see some... Uh, you know what? My good friends Joey, Joel, and Ale would not be happy with me if I didn't show off a harpsichord. <laughs> That's a nice harpsichord. It's a nice harpsichord. Probably Roland's always had like the best harpsichord sample as far as I'm aware. Like since 94, for some reason, no one knows how to do and sample a harpsichord right other than Roland, I guess. Uh, and uh, yeah, harpsichord's still the best harpsichord. Uh, this one actually sounds a little different, so I'm guessing they like did some new samples. Uh, sounds even like more like a real harpsichord. Let's check some synth stuff. So the first sound here is called Wizard Lead. I wonder who that's influenced by. Cool. They also have, you probably have noticed by now, they have a uh, wheels and a joystick. So now you don't have to choose between the two. If you like one more than the other, you can do that. I actually personally am a, I'm a wheel person, so I, uh, especially when it comes to like vibratos like that. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm really happy they decided to, at the very least, include them as an extra bit, you know, instead of replacing the joystick. So that's really cool. Um, let's go through some more of these synth sounds that we got here. <laughs> Reminds me of like a Muse type of synth sound. That's something Muse would use, I'm pretty sure. Some pads. Okay, wow, they have a lot of a lot of pads. They have 24 pages worth of pads. I'm just gonna go through here and see what pops out and just choose one. There are there are so many pads. Oh my god. Obviously, you saw me touch the screen a few times now. It's a touch screen. Mm -hmm. You don't actually have to use the touch screen if you don't want to. I'm pretty sure you can pretty much do everything with any of the buttons and knobs. Uh, but it's nice to have the option. It's actually a really nice synth strings. I like this. JP8 string, so probably a Jupiter 8 string, I'm guessing. Cool. OB string, so this is probably an Oberheim. Uh, let's uh, let's go to bass. Let's see what's going on in the bass world. Electric bass, pick bass. Thank you. 
So let's go out of the single tone and go back to the scene select because that's where all the cool, huge, layered sounds are. And let's see some of those. So another cool thing is uh, these pads, you can pretty much do whatever you want with the pads. You can put samples, uh, you can make them play sequences, drum beats, uh, all kinds of things. If you go to the, the pad mode, you can see a bunch of different options you can have. You can have DAW control, which I'll get into, but right now it's on samples, and I think it just, let's see what's on here. Sick drum beat. Uh, so here you have uh, faders. You can change the, the zones. So right now it's uh, 1 through 8, and then you press this button. It goes through 9 through 16. One thing I really all love uh, is that a lot of time a lot of keyboards that have faders, they're, uh, you know, the faders can be in a different position digitally than they are physically. And the cool thing about having these lights on next to these faders is that you can actually see where digitally they are. those faders are saved to regardless of where you physically have them uh, currently, which I think is really cool. So like right now this fader is all the way, which is the volume fader, I believe, the main one of the main volume faders. So if I turn it down, it goes down. And this one's all the way up, but the fader's already down. But if I move it a little bit, it, you know, meets, it goes to where the physical fader is. Um, so that's really cool. It gives you an idea if you're in a sound uh, when you're playing live and uh, you're not sure which sound or fader is where um, actually you can see very easily. Same with the, uh, with the knobs. Um, you can set them to pretty much any parameter you want. Uh, you don't need to really set them for cutoff and stuff like that unless you specifically have different sounds that you want different cutoffs for. Uh, they have an entire like synth um, parameter section here, which is really cool for that. This, this keyboard has uh, very strong synth capabilities, so it makes sense that they would include the ability to physically control and change that stuff on the fly. It's pretty much all the controls you would want to actually change in real time at any point during your performance would be here. Filter, you can even change the filter type. Uh, resonance, you got your uh, ADSR, change your attack and decay, sustain, release whenever you want. You can even change the amp volume, and you can even change, select the ADSR for uh, if you want to affect the, the pitch envelope filter or amp. That's really cool. Uh, you have some stuff for the uh, for the uh, uh, effects and also for the uh, oscillator. You can go between different parameters and stuff like that. Actually, let me see real quick if I go to that. If I click parameter. 
Yeah, it takes me straight to the, the, the oscillator parameter page and I can choose what kind of oscillator I want. It looks like here we have the option between PCM, which is samples, VA, which is virtual analog, PCM sync, which is I believe what the new version of their sampling engine for this keyboard uses. It's like some kind of special sample based engine. Uh, Super saw and, oh, where'd it go? Super saw and noise are the other two oscillator types. That's really cool. So the VA, VA uh, virtual analog, that's physical modeling uh, that doesn't use any samples. That is the uh, digital recreation of synth sounds like your sawtooths and squares and signs and all that. Really awesome. Usually sounds a lot more realistic than the sample versions do. So one of my favorite things about this keyboard, one of the things that really makes it stand out and special is the way you can integrate it with whatever system you're using or whatever like you're doing. So for example, uh, here there's a DAW control. So you can, uh, I think, I think uh, as of release, the only DAW support is Logic, but they are, I, mean, I was told that they are going to eventually roll out for all major DAWs. Uh, will have uh, will be compatible and it essentially turns your entire keyboard into a controller for the, for your DAW. While that's cool for recording and stuff like that, what's even cooler is if you play live and you like to use your laptop, say you have a MacBook and you use Mainstage, which is what most people usually uh, use if playing live with a with a keyboard, the Phantom actually has the ability to directly interface with Mainstage. It, it'll actually show the Mainstage screen and synth options that you have uh, on whatever you're using on Mainstage on the screen on your Phantom, which I've never seen any keyboard do, I'm pretty sure. No keyboard has done that. I think it's awesome because I've been personally trying to shift a lot of my sound, my live performance stuff, especially with, with, my, with Witherfall, and just everything I do in general to a laptop main stage based system. But there are things about not having a real keyboard like this, for example, that I'm having a hard time doing without. And this seems like it might actually be the answer to that problem. Uh, I haven't been able to mess around with it yet because like I said, just got this in last night. Basically, I took it out of the box and brought it here to show you guys. But when I do the full review, I'll go through all that all that stuff. But yeah, they the way they explained it to me was that it'll have full integration. Uh, you can see all your stuff from main stage here. Change sounds and everything will be main stage is fully uh, has full integration with the with the entire keyboard, and you can assign like if you want to assign patch changes to the pads, you can do that. You can assign it to a pedal all that good stuff. It really sounds like, in terms of integration, there is no keyboard out there that can integrate with a computer system quite like this thing can. And it's an audio interface too. Uh, so if you're playing live, for example, this is a problem that anyone playing live comes across if you're using a laptop, you have to have an interface because you need the sounds to come out of that laptop, preferably not using the eighth inch jack on it, right? You want it to come out, pretty decent quality. So you'll have a good interface with you. With the Phantom, you can actually use it as an interface with main stage and you can have all the main stage sounds routed to go through the Phantom and out through the outputs. So you actually d just need your laptop and the Phantom and you're good to go. I haven't tried it out yet, like I said, I don't know what the latency is like, but I I'm told it goes down to like 1.3 milliseconds, which that's that's definitely good enough for me. That's probably what I'm most excited and curious about. There's a lot of other stuff that this can do, like uh, it has a sampling capability, which I, which I uh, really, uh, really like, because a lot of keyboards have been coming out that don't have sampling, which really bothers me, because there's a lot of different sounds from a lot of different keyboards that I love that I want to have all in one place, and I like to do that by doing multi-sampling. Now, the keyboard, as of right now, it doesn't support multi-sampling. I was told that, that it is a feature that will be coming down the line as an, uh, as an update for people uh, to, to load into the Phantom and it'll give the Phantom multi-sampling capability and you can multi-sample any keyboard or instrument that you have that you want the sounds all in one place. So I think that's really cool. Another thing that uh, they told me that's gonna be coming down the line actually pretty soon they're gonna have a lot of free updates that's going to add a lot of functionality and sounds to the keyboard. And eventually, there'll be updates that'll give you 
whole new sound engines added to the keyboard. So they're definitely positioning the Phantom as more of like a platform where they intend to build on for years and years to come, which I think is probably the, the smart way to go about it because you know, you're know you asking people to make an investment in a pretty substantial piece of equipment. I think in this day and age with so many things giving you so much value years and years uh, after you've bought it, it makes sense that that would finally happen to keyboards. So yeah, there's gonna be a bunch of instruments uh, that you can download and add and engines that are gonna be available down the line that'll uh, round out the keyboard more than just synth heavy focus stuff like it is right now. Because the synth engine right now in this thing is amazing. Uh, it's definitely one of the best synth engines out there in a keyboard, except uh, it, I do feel like so far from what I've seen, it is a little lacking in other aspects of in terms of the sounds. The piano is also amazing. The piano uses, like I said, the, the V piano technology. Uh, so it, it, it just sounds so realistic. Like every time I play this piano, it's, I just, it's crazy. <laughs> Like, listen to how dynamic their piano is. Like, I, I don't know what sorcery they do to, they, they, they did to pull this off. I think this is where, like, the physical modeling side of things takes place. But, like, l like listen to how soft and how loud it can go without any, like, perceivable, like, velo vo velocity layer switching. some of that string resonance. Yeah, so right now the piano and synth on this keyboard is among the best. I haven't like had a chance to compare it to anything like like literally head to head, but just based on uh, me playing and listening to it now, it definitely definitely is up there. And the other sounds are great. I mean, a lot of them are sounds that uh, are actually some of these are actually kind of recognized to be honest from like past uh, Roland keyboards that I've had which I actually really love because that means I don't need to dig the old sounds up and try to recreate them on here. So I really love that they included a lot of the old sounds on here. Uh, but at the same time, I would like to see some new strings and, and brass and guitar and keys and organs and stuff like that, uh, which they say is coming. So I definitely look forward to that. Really excites me that they're gonna be updating it constantly like a platform. All right, so I actually wanna go through the IO with you guys real quick. So. Uh, this has, it's loaded with I.O. A lot of I.O. that I actually have never seen before in a keyboard. Um, so this is really cool. So check it out. So they have headphone jack, of course. And this is, I mean, it's, they're not the first to do this. I think actually some, uh, of, some of the recent Roland keyboards before this one uh, did XLR balanced out. But why is Roland the only people doing this? Like having XLR balanced outputs should just be the default. Like, you don't need to carry around a DI box with you everywhere. You just XLR cables and go. It's pretty awesome. You got two sub outs, two stereo sub outs, which is great because, say, for example, you're in a band. So, like me and Trey, within Virtue, we have tracks, we have, uh, we have a, a tempo map with a click track, and, you know, it's, it changes throughout the song sometimes, and it's a lot to keep track of. Oh, what's really cool is I could now set the keyboard to play the tempo map and track and all that stuff, and I can have it go sub out two, and that'll be just be the click track and whatever the drummer wants to hear. Uh, and I can send it just through that output, and then I could send through these two outputs anything else I want. Then the mains would just be the main outputs. Um, I think that's really cool. It gives you a lot of flexibility. I think this might actually completely eliminate the need to have like a dedicated, like the drummer to have like a dedicated like 
computer or something to start and stop uh, and like control MIDI and stuff like that because at, at the very most, if they wanted to do it themselves, they would just need some kind of tiny MIDI controller and you could assign that MIDI controller that there's basically when he presses a button or something, it, it starts the next track or whatever you want. So I think that's really cool. So this next part is very interesting. It's a, a analog filter out and a CV uh, gate out, which is very handy if you have actual synths laying around Eurorack or even like your old school stuff like, like Mini Moogs and stuff like that. Uh, you can actually use the Phantom to control them, which is crazy. Uh, also here we have a uh, USB, one for, is for memory and the other is to connect to your computer. That's how you uh, use your computer as an interface, is through that USB cable. And uh, it will allow you the ability to not only output sound from the Phantom and record it onto your DAW, but also, like I mentioned earlier, allows you to take sounds in from main stage or anything like that and actually output that sound through the Phantom. It's really cool. So here we also have uh, three USB ports, and these are specifically so you could connect uh, some kind of MIDI controller and uh, and use it in conjunction with the Phantom. And these ports are all powered, so you can power three different MIDI controllers of any kind, you know, keyboard, pads, w whatever, and it'll all work in conjunction with the Phantom and they'll all be powered. I think it's super great. It makes uh, it makes things a lot easier than trying to deal with MIDI cables, especially since most controllers these days, they get powered off of USB. It, it's just like a nice clean setup to just have one USB cable there for that controller and you're good to go. I think that's really cool. Here there's two mic uh, li and line inputs uh, for basically recording anything you want into the keyboard, uh, stereo or mono. Uh, you could do vocals, you could uh, record a guitar, you could record another keyboard, really whatever you want. It's really cool. And uh, here we have four pedal uh, inputs. One is a, a hold for like the uh, for sustain pedals, and the others are for and the others are pretty much for whatever you want. I personally usually only end up using the uh, the sustain pedal and a control pedal to go between my sounds and patches using my feet. So I don't I never have to take my hands off the action. Uh, and with the mic input, also, uh, if you are a singer, you can plug your mic into there. It, it has a preamp, and you can put effects on your voice, compressors, reverb, whatever you want, and it'll all output through the stereo outputs on the uh, on the on the keyboard. Really handy, especially if you're like a, a singer songwriter type of thing, and you're playing piano and singing at the same time. It doesn't get really much easier than that. And then, of course, and finally, we have uh, the MIDI out. There's a MIDI in and two MIDI outs, which is actually pretty cool. Usually, it's just a MIDI in, out, and through, but they decided to make the through uh, a second out uh, if you choose it to be a second out. Probably most people won't need to use that, but uh, it's there if you do need it. And here we have the power button and the AC plug. I mean, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty action packed back there. Um, so I don't know where else they could have put this AC plug, but I do kind of feel like I wish it was on this side because most of the plugging in action is probably going to be on this side. And my OCD just likes having all the cables in one area if there's going to be a cable, but uh, that's just my stupid brain. So, And on the front here, like I said, we have the joystick, we have wheels, eight faders, eight knobs, master volume, uh, the ability to change the zones, between them all. Here, the touch screen. And here we have six push-in knobs that, uh, that uh, they change uh, what they can do uh, depending on the context that they're in. So for example, right now we're in single, single tone mode uh, and we're on the, uh, the uh, tone wheel organ. Uh, so that has specific parameters that shows up that they can control. But if we uh, go back to scene select uh, and choose something else, uh, It'll change depending on what's chosen. See, like there, now it's on some kind of piano. So we're seeing the piano settings. And last but not least is the sequencing section. This thing's pretty crazy. So uh, the way they have it, it works is kind of like how, if you're familiar with Ableton, you'll probably know what this is, but it's like a, it's like a matrix. So anything you record once, it'll show up on like the top part here. And if you record again, It'll, 
record it below it, and each bar uh, will show up as a, as a box here. And if you decide, you know what, I liked what I did in bars one and three in the first take, and I liked what I did in bars two and four in the second take. And you can actually specifically choose what you want on the touchscreen and kind of mesh them together that way. It's really cool. I'm, I'm not that used to that kind of uh, like sequencer mode, uh, but uh, I messed around with it for a tiny bit, and uh, it, was, uh, it was pretty cool. So overall, I, I'm pretty optimistic about this keyboard. I, uh, I haven't really dug that f deep into it yet, but just based on what I'm seeing here, what I'm hearing, and what they're promising with this being like a platform that they're just constantly going to be putting updates out and expanding on and adding new features and sound engines, uh, it definitely seems to have the capability to do that. Uh, one thing that I, I haven't really mentioned yet was the kind of power that they have in here under the hood is kind of crazy. They have so much DSP power that they said, that they told me that you would never have to worry about ever running out of power. A lot of like uh, newer keyboards, they'll have like a DSP meter, so it tells you uh, how dangerous you are to running out of power. Uh, they didn't even include that in this one because it's pretty much not going to happen, which I think is pretty great. Uh, and then to top things off, all that DSP power that they made to run all this stuff because you got to remember, one scene could potentially be 16 sounds. Each sound has potentially four tones. I, I don't even know how many effects. I think like eight to 16 different effects. Yeah, 16, 16 different effects can be going on at the same time. You could have samples going on, and you can have entire sequencer going on all at the same time. And when you change to the next sound, which might be just as complex, nothing stops. Everything comp keeps going until it's uh, until either it's, uh, it, uh, it's reached the end of its uh, uh, cycle in terms of the sequencer or unless you stop it. So the seamless patch switching in this thing is crazy because usually when you change from one sound to another, like the sound you're playing will, st will stay, but you know, the sequencer will stop. The, uh, the samples that, that were going on are going to stop. Uh, but that's, that doesn't happen in this case, even with all that stuff going on. So it's a crazy amount of power that they have under the hood. I don't know exactly like what the technical details are. It definitely makes me feel optimistic with that kind of power under the hood, what they'll be able to do in the future in terms of adding new sound engines and updates and things like that. So Trey just asked me if I would replace my current main keyboard, which is a Core Kronos, uh, currently the, the v version 2 of it, with this keyboard. And that's hard to say because I literally have only had this thing for less than 24 hours, whereas the Kronos I've had for like, like eight years. So I don't know the answer to that fully yet, but based on my first impressions, I think so. It, what, and the reason why is not just because it has a lot of cool sounds and stuff like that. And there are things that the Kronos can do that this, as of right now, can't do yet, like the multi-sampling thing. But the ability to integrate main stage and for my virtual instruments that I've been trying to do for a long time in a live scenario like easily and well has me really excited because if like the ability to bring those two worlds together and do it seamlessly and say for example actually main stage dies I still have a completely fully functioning practically workstation grade flagship keyboard in front of me if I have if I was relying heavily uh, on main stage, I could have a different scene, go to that immediately, and that's just like basically my phantom version of that set list. Like any worry a person would have about, oh, would I trust my computer in a live scenario? What if it crashes? You have a backup in literally the keyboard you're using. So it's that coupled with how awesome the piano sounds, because I mean, I play a lot of piano stuff in Virtue, a lot of piano stuff in Witherfall. Uh, yeah, I use a lot of piano and synth sounds actually these days, mostly. The Phantom actually lends itself more towards what I'm doing these days than, than the Kronos in general. But I still love having some awesome sounding strings, choirs, uh, and stuff like that, and orchestration stuff because I still do use those. All that considered, once I dive a little more deep into this, uh, unless I discover something that's really like uh, that I don't drive well with, uh, I think this might be 
might be my become my new baby we'll see something i haven't uh, mentioned yet is uh actually the construction first of all i think it's actually a pretty nice looking keyboard i really like this red thing going on like back here it kind of looks like a futuristic like spaceship type of thing and that's like the you know propulsion part um but yeah i really like the the design of it and this keyboard feels like it could take one hell of a beating i definitely would trust this on the road the one thing about the chronos that was unfortunate I, on my first european tour i took it uh to europe you know in a hard case uh, a good hard case and when I, by the time i came back it was just not the same <laughs> is the best way to describe it uh, it just felt like a little looser than it did before like nothing was broken like there wasn't like any moving parts or anything like that it just didn't feel very solid this feels like a tank like with the with the chronos uh actually no, i usually only do this when i when i have laptops but like to check if there's like any flex in the chassis with the chronos there was some flex in the chassis like it was made out of metal but and there was also plastic but just for whatever way how it was put together or designed or something th th you, there was like a little bit of a bend you could do to it at least the first version i think the second version helped fix that a little bit but with this thing it's just it's completely solid uh the, the bottom is like a really like thick metal this part's uh metal too there's like a little bit of plastic here and the sides are plastic but they feel like a very very rigid uh hard plastic if i ever take this on the road uh maybe i'll do like a a video about what it was like touring with this thing just first impressions i would definitely trust this keyboard on the road for sure another thing i forgot to mention is the user interface is really snappy and like responsive i love that because for some reason with the chronos it, it was it, it was it wasn't horrible but it's just it it was always just a little too slow i mean it's an old keyboard granted and they've done a lot of updates so and changed a lot of things over the years but it's just, it just kind of, it was just one of those things that kind of just bothered me. It's like, I wish it was just a little faster and snappier. Um, this thing is super quick, snappy, high resolution screen. It's gorgeous. The montage had a, actually has a very similar kind of like look and feel to it. The one thing that kind of annoyed me about uh, the montage was for some reason, the user interface was just super slow. Like you would press something and it would take, oh, I felt like a little second or two for it to actually switch to that thing or move or and it just constantly felt like there was like a like a lag to everything it was just sluggish and it was one of the things that really kind of made me not enjoy using the keyboard as much as i should have it's like a small thing it, I probably, it shouldn't really matter it's just small things like that that makes the experience of playing an instrument just that much better thanks for watching guys please be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because i'm going to be doing a full review on this guy and you're definitely not going to want to miss that i'm going to go real deep just find every single thing that makes this thing tick anything i like about it don't like about it we'll go into more of the sounds uh, a lot more in detail and uh, we'll even try to make some of our own sounds when we do it. So if you guys have any specific questions you'd like me to cover in the review, just let me know in the comments below and I'll try and get that answered. And until then, I will see you guys later.